Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I just realized that the YouTube mic was, the YouTube video had not started. If you remember when Christ was found in the temple with the teachers, he was listening and asking questions. In Nigeria, all we do is listen. We don't ask questions. We don't question anything. Please put my drink, the Pepsi, into the freezer. Just don't need to close the freezer. Just put it there. Yes, just lie down in it. Thank you, my darling. Do you understand what I'm talking about, guys? And I have realized that the doctrines that we've been fed, the lies we've been told, are catching up with us. It's only a matter of time. Yoruba people say, Tiroba lo lo guadun, meaning if a lie goes on for 20 years, one day the truth will wake up. I want you to look at someone beside you this afternoon like I'm looking at Amarachi. And I want you to tell that person like you genuinely mean the words I'm going to be saying. The truth has woken up. Say it back to me, Amarachi. Louder like you mean it. Do you believe the truth has woken up? You don't believe. You believe we're still in the lies. The truth generally. Do you believe it has woken up? You be, or you believe it is waking up. Which one? It is waking up. I'm actually in the spirit today with me. The truth is waking up. And the truth is a bitter pill, a double-edged sword. Let's remember that Christ is... The way, the life, and Amarachi. The way, the life, and somebody help me. Somebody, let me see how many of you know basic biblical scriptures. Truth is, uh, Christ is the way, the life, and and no, you're getting you the what? Nope, the truth. So once the truth starts to wake up. The way gets clearer and there's a light shining upon the way that will guide us to Christ. Remember John chapter 4, we will only be able to worship God in spirit and in truth. So if I tell you the truth is waking up, I'm not joking. And it will be sad for you to still live in a lie after the truth has woken. It would still be, it will be extremely sad. Go with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and 15. The book of Revelation. I'm not going to read from 15 today. I, I'm going to go a little um, further back, say maybe from 12 or maybe even earlier so you understand what the scripture is saying. It's a revelation. While we're waiting for the network to load my scriptures, I don't know why they're being so slow today. Yeah, someone said, Daddy, please get a book Bible. No, it's a scroll that I want to be preaching from. Because even the books, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> are not Christ-like. One guy was telling me, Daddy Freeze, why do you use iPad? Can't you use a book Bible? Did Jesus Christ in his entire life ever see a book Bible? Do you know when books were invented? Why don't you go and use the one he was using? More, more people. That's, that's why they are scattering their churches up and down. Why don't they scatter it? Ordinary truths they cannot know. Come, this thing that is happening today is... The scripture is very slow today. Is Lagos traffic holding my scriptures? Is refusing to open. Ah, I've never had it this bad. Ah, and I have plenty of scripture that we are going to read today. See the team. It's not even loading.
No more. I don't know as this thing will take work to do. It's not working. We're not working at all. The scriptures are not loading. I've never had it this bad before. Amrat, you have your Bible there. Yeah, just give it to me. I will manage the book one while this one is loading up. Aha, devil people that are shouting book Bible. Today we are here with you. Anyway, I have Amarachi's New Living Translation in a book here. Revelation 22 and um, 10. Then he instructed me, do not seal up the prophetic words in this book. For the time is near. Let the one who is doing harm. Continue to do harm. Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. Let the one who is righteous continue to live righteously. And let the one who is holy continue to be holy. Look, I'm coming soon. Bring in my reward with me to repay all the people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the city, through the gates of the city. Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the immoral, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshippers. And all who love to live a lie. So everyone who loves to live a lie is outside the city. Means if the truth wakes up, it has been forced underground for so long. It has been subdued for so long. It has been covered up with a body of lies for so long. But the truth's about to wake up. And when it does wake up, nothing's going to stand in its way. Those who love living a lie will not be inside. It is says... Blessed are those who wash their robes. They'll be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. If you live a lie, you will not partake in the fruit of the tree of life. Okay? Now, who saw the list that came out yesterday? I want to be very relaxed with you guys today. It's a gentle session. Who saw the list that came out yesterday or the day before? This is specially for my black brothers and sisters. Hmm? In the whole world, there are only 13 black billionaires in the whole world. As I speak to you, all black people, only 13 are billionaires in dollars. In China, as I speak to you, there are 819 billionaires. The 19 on top of the 800 is more than all the black people in, on planet Earth put together. So if you've, belie- you've been believing that religion, because there's no one more religious than the black man. We still burn witches. We still have hallelujah challenges. We still do all those things. And to show for it, we have just 13 black. This includes America, Europe, uh, Africa, your blessed Nigeria with 20 churches on every street. There are only 13 black billionaires. You can check it out on Forbes. By the time you add Dangote, Adenuga, um, Oprah Winfrey, you get the number 13. I want to read you some statistics today. Uh,
We've identified that there are 800 billionaires. Now, in the entire world, there are, according to Forbes, there are 2,153 international billionaires. 21 are Israeli. So there are more Jewish billionaires than black billionaires. How many Jewish people do we have in the world? Do we have as many Jewish people as black people? You have people like Abramovic for representing Israel and so many other people. Now, I want to get a few more details for you. I want, to, I want us to go to Forbes because there are some things I want to reach, read to you from Forbes. Okay. Now, Forbes on the 9th of January said there are fewer billionaires and poorer billionaires on the African continent. So who is tight working for? Where are the people that my tight is working for me? Where are the people that they, where are you guys? The richest people on earth are not Christians, they're not tithers, and they're not black. It shows a lot. It tells the black man a lot. Now, here's another thing I want to talk about. I have a bit of a headache, so I'm a bit slow today. Work with me. Forgive the fact that I'm slow. That's another thing I wanted to talk about. If you go to my, I, I put up an article today on my Instagram page. So if you do have some spare time, you could visit there. My computer is just slow today. I'm not even feeling this. It's never been this slow in a while. Okay. Of the 13 billionaires in 2019, only four are Nigerians. Dangote Adenuga, Abdul Samad Rabiu, and Foloron Shaw Alakija. So out of all the countries in the world and all the races in the world, the black race with all our gifts, all our talents, all our intellectual capabilities and all our enterprise, we can only submit 13 billionaires. I want you to look at someone beside you and tell them religion, culture, and tradition are big problems. The Chinese are not very religious, but they're very traditional. Their traditions are not backward like our own. And I think it is high time that we started addressing stupid African traditions, ridiculous African traditions, senseless African traditions. I was told that according to the Igbo tradition, for instance, I'm just giving a suggestion now, if a woman is not properly divorced and she has another a child for the new husband the child actually belongs to the old husband 
this is people's foolishness. Have you tried to try it in Canada or the US or Germany to go and tell a, a, a woman that gave birth to a child that her child does not belong to her, it does not belong to the man she is with, it belongs to her old. Can you people go and try this nonsense in those places and see how many days you spend behind bars explaining your foolishness to the law enforcement agents? Let me tell you what happened to a friend of mine. He came, she, he, the guy came home and his wife was in, no, sorry, it was um, Evelyn that told me the story. A guy came home and met his wife in bed with another man. And as he started to rake, the wife just called 911 right there. I said, I'm in my house. My husband wants to attack me. Wow, 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 wow. Police came, escorted the man out of the house, and told the wife to call them if he gives her any more trouble. I'm not agreeing with that system, but you're all going to submit to that system eventually if you continue breeding senseless traditions. As long as you continue embellishing senseless traditions you will submit to other people's traditions no woman will see that nonsense tradition and say i will do it they will just go across the road to the europeans that will support them and before you know it you have lost everyone to the west We had Babalaos and herbalists who understood African ailments. Where are they today? Nobody's using them again. Why? Because instead of them being gentle, kind, and wonderful with their magic and their herbs and whatever it is they had, they were using it for wickedness. So when the white man came with his own, his own was easier, more straightforward, and more humane. The other day, you all saw the video of two bro brothers beating their younger sister because she cheated on her husband. Like, seriously. And people were supporting them. I'm like, you see, this, your culture, is going to die. It is not just going to die. It's going to die and it's going to be forgotten. And you see, what's going to happen is they would remind generations to come that there once was a tribe. Because the more the truth wakes up, the more light you have on the way, and the less people will subscribe to darkness. Nigeria needs to wake up. If Africa is going to be quiet, if Africa is going to remain asleep, Nigeria would wake up. We have to bring reforms. Not just to our mindset anymore. You can see that this is beyond just our mindset. We want to keep our traditions. We have to reform them. When Christ came, go and read Matthew chapter 19. The Pharisees and the scribes surrounded him. They said, can we just divorce our women for just any reason? Before the time of Christ, a man could divorce his woman for any reason. She didn't do her hair well. She's getting too fat. She has had too many children. Uh, she's not ladylike anymore. You know what? She just, he just woke up on a bad side of the bed and he decided, you know what? I divorce you. All he needs to do is write a bill of divorcement and hand it over to her and she's divorced. That was the tradition until Christ came. When Christ came, he said, no, unless the woman has cheated, you cannot divorce her. He overhauled the tradition. He didn't maintain it. And I'm going to take you today to the book of Matthew. Show you what Christ did. Those of you clowns who still believe the laws. Matthew 19.
finally my bible has decided to open sorry my scriptures Some Pharisees, I'm reading from three, came and tried to trap him with this question. Should a man be allowed to divorce his wife for just any reason? Haven't you read the scriptures? He replied, they record that from the beginning, God made them male and female. What does that mean? It means God made them equal. Tradition brought inequality. I guess y'all didn't know this part of the scriptures. God made them male and female, not two males and one female, not one male and four females. He made them equal, but the wickedness in humanity and tradition, and I'll show you in the scriptures. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and his mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two but one, but let no one split apart what God has joined together. Then why did Moses say in the law that a man could give his wife a written notice of divorce and send her away, they asked. Christ replied, Moses permitted divorce only as a concession to your hard hearts, but it was not what God originally intended. And I tell you this. Whosoever divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery unless the wife has been prostituting. Moses bent the law. He did the law. He allowed it simply because their hearts were hard. When you kill a child for being a witch, it shows only one thing. Your heart is hard. Think about this. And I'm going to show you some other scriptures. I'm going to show you some more scriptures. Let's go back to the book of Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5. And I've got quite a lot to read to you from here today. Do you want your Bible, Amarachi? Hmm? You what? You already know it. You already know Matthew chapter 5. What was in Matthew chapter 5? Sorry, sorry, sorry. You have to come around, come around, come and see. Hmm? Where did I see this child from? Knows more Bible than me. Oh, yeah, come, 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 come. Oh yeah, come, come, come. People want to see you. I can't believe this. I said, Amarachi, take your Bible. He said, no, no, don't worry. I already know it. You already know it. Oh yeah, come, 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 come. So what is written in Matthew chapter 5? Let everybody see you. Oh yeah, see it. Mm, Jesus talks about... Louder. Can you people hear her? Oh yeah, louder. Jesus. Sorry, let them see you. Oh yeah. Jesus talks about revenge, adultery, divorce... Possessions and money and all those other things, adultery, vows. Vows. <laughs> eh? I hope you two are teaching your own children like this. If my child if they take my child to a Pentecostal church, my mind will be at rest because she knows the scriptures. What about you? So let's read Matthew chapter five. Christ said, from 17, don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophet. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest detail of God's commandment will disappear until its purpose is achieved. 
So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's law and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. What's the purpose of Christ's coming so that he could be nailed to the cross? And when he was eventually nailed to the cross, he was nailed along with the law. But even while he was alive, he overhauled the law. Let's read 21. You heard that our ancestors were told you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you're even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. Even me, I did guilty of this one. Before it was murder. Now Christ has angered cursing, verbal assault, with murder. What did he just do? He overhauled the system while yet he lived, even before the new covenant came into effect. 23. So if you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice at the altar, go and be reconciled to that person, then come and offer your sacrifice to God. Meaning all of you dingbats that have been offering your whatever sacrifice you think you're offering to God while your hearts are hard to your men, your sacrifice is null and void. Teaching about adultery. You've heard the commandments that say you must not commit adultery. But I say anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery in his heart. Before you could look all you want. Don't touch. And if you touch, don't get caught. Christ said, no, that's the old system. In the new system, you're not even allowed to look. Go with me to 33. So you've heard that our ancestors were told you must not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. But I say, do not make any vows. He came to cancel vows. Why? Because people were being exploited with vows. Go to 38. You have heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on your right cheek, offer the left cheek also. If you're sued in court and your shirt is taken, give your coat too. He cancelled revenge. You have heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting like the true, true children of your father in heaven. For he gives sunlight to both the evil and the good and sends the rain to the just and the unjust alike. If the tradition, you see tradition, it says you have heard the law that says. No worries, not into you can help me pack the ice and put in the in the bathroom. I'm defrosting my fridge. Sorry, so don't panic. I'm actually panic, right? He said, "You have heard the law. Was that a custom, a tradition, something you've been doing?" He came to say it's wrong. You heard the law that said punishment must match the injury. He came. He overhauled it. You have also heard our ancestors were told you must not break your vows. He came and said, "Do not even make any vows, let alone break them." He came and said, you have heard the law that says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving a divorce, a notice of divorce. But I say any man who divorces his wife unless she's been unfaithful causes her to commit adultery. You've heard that the scriptures, that, that the law says do not commit adultery. But if I say, I say that as long as you look, you're already committing adultery. Somebody is saying there is no new system. He came to magnify the law. The law was done away with, which is the law of sacrifice for sins. Samuel, must you talk? Me, I have almost 400 videos out there on YouTube explaining why we are no longer the, under the law. You just come here for the first or second time and you start... Uh, I'm not talking to you. I'm just talking to somebody, the person who is gingering you. Come on, guys. Nobody's saying 
He came. I'm th you see, there was. You guys need to understand that there was a Christ before the way. The way did not happen until the sacrifice. I'm trying to say that even while he was subject to the law, he reformed it. Let's say you together. Maybe then you'd be able to understand what I'm trying to say. No, Samuel, sorry, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the other guy who was stressing you. Let's talk about, let's say this. Even while subject to the law, Christ reformed the law. This is a clear example. Go and read Matthew chapter 5. He didn't say, do not break your vows. He said, don't even make vows. He said, adultery is not when you sleep with a woman. Because half the time when you sleep with a woman, you don't get caught. And the poor people who get caught are now made scapegoats for a sin. That night, you, you start seeing it from the pulpits. You start seeing it. A woman, they say, was cheating. Man also went to cheat and have children. You see, it's, 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 we, we, we're, 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 we're all sinners. I'm not saying it to spite them. I'm just saying it. So if Christ came to reform traditions that were wicked, because a man could write a bill of divorcement to his wife for no reason and send her away wickedly in a male-dominated society. And Christ said, no, you can't do that anymore. When are we going to sit the Yoruba people down? When are we going to sit the Hausa people down? When are we going to tell the Igbo people to get a chair? When are we going to tell them to overhaul their wicked laws? In many places in Nigeria today, if a couple have a child, the child belongs to the man. It's nonsense. It will not last. At the end of the day, your children and your wife will bow to an alien culture simply because your culture is wicked. Desist from promoting wicked cultures. desist from wicked cultures the white man would never have infiltrated africa and taken our children as slaves if we didn't have wicked traditions and cultures and i must warn you there are 815 chinese billionaires 500 American billionaires, 300 and something Indian billionaires. While there are only 13 black billionaires. There's a reason why. Because the Chinese, the Indians, do not have cultures that are as wicked as our own. Cultures that suppress females relegate them to the background make them feel less important whereas god made them male and female a man's role of headship comes with the sacrifice that he must be ready to die for his wife not that he's her head and he can wake up and tell her i want to marry another woman and you must obey me and my new woman Somebody said, is traditional marriage recognized by God? No. The only marriage recognized by God is a marriage of you and your spouse standing before God alone. God doesn't recognize your nonsense traditions. How many traditions does he want to recognize? Is it Indian tradition that the woman gives the husband the dowry? Or our Nigerian tradition? Or the Amazon tradition. You people think you are the only people on the surface of the world. 
It would have been nice if Jesus was born in uh, uh, Meiduguri and he grew up in Yaba. There's nothing linking Nigeria to the scriptures. So we're as Gentile as they come. So if God was even going to recognize a tradition, it's probably going to be the Hebrew tradition, not our own. If God, if Christ did not get husbands for Mary and Martha, the closest women to him in the scriptures, he will not come and get a husband for you. Aramide or you Uchi or you Halima. Christ is not in the business of finding husbands for women. Christ is not in the business of settling land matter. He clearly said it. He told the man, he said, who made me a judge over such matters? Take a wife and ask the Lord to bless her. You see, because your traditions are wicked. Listen here. If your traditional system was good, there will be no white wedding. And if the church system was good, there will be no court wedding. Do you, have you noticed that the church tells people to go and marry in the court? You see me? Why? Because they know their system is not okay. If their system were okay, they don't need to. Listen here. When you marry in conscience, you're walking in truth and in the spirit. You are not going to cheat a woman. I don't have to have a, I don't have to have a traditional tie. Or a Christian church tie with a woman before we are married. Nonsense. That's what I'm here to stop. Because God does not like it. He does not want it. And he did not send people to be doing this nonsense. People are doing up and down like headless chicken. As I'm talking now, you will raise your head from inside the gutter. Say, Dali Fris, Dali Fris, Dali Fris, Dali Fris. You people are okay. You are not okay and you know. Give me my other phone, Amarachi. Thank you very much. Give me my iPhone. I want to read something to you. This is, this is one of my close disciples. I discuss this only with Jigger. But I'm going to read the message to you all. Let me tell you, as long as your laws continue subjecting people to pain. Your traditions continue dehumanizing women and children. They will continue to fail. I'm going to read this to you. Daddy Freeze, good evening, sir. Thank you for your eye-opening teaching on the Joshua Iginla issue. I am free and liberated. I have endured enough. I'd be happier out this so-called marriage. Thanks for the message. It was designed for me. And I said, what happened? Are you okay? This is a lady who's very close to me. I'm okay, sir. Having the free nation is enough strength for me. I told you about my husband's job. He got, and the job was taken away from him by some people. I foot the bills at home. I run the house without help from anywhere. I understand perfectly that sometimes life could be like that. Sir, do you know that despite these, my husband cheats? His own cheating is on a very high scale. He tells girls he's not married. He's a, a woman married to a man. She is feeding. Even when they see my kids' pictures on his phones, he tells them they are his sister's kids. Do I deserve such? After all, I'm going through to put the house together. Our rent has been due and he doesn't have a dime to pay for it. Yet he always stays out to sleep with small girls. He traveled recently and went to um, another state out there. A girl called from there to ask who am I, I am to him. I told her I am his wife. And she screamed and said, Ma, I'm sorry. I never knew because he said he's single, a jobless man, yet he won't give me rest of mind. I have spoken, counseled, advised, yet nothing. He is even growing worse. Do you know there was a time he claimed his friend was getting married and he traveled? I found out when a girl called me and I took a call. She was shocked. 
Because I never knew, because she never knew he was married. How many I won't talk. I am getting a divorce ASAP. And my darling sister, I am with you. You need a divorce. In fact, you needed a divorce many years ago. It is the false doctrines that our faith is based upon that give leverage for the Iginla situation that we just saw. Iginla is saying the wife brought a child, an unholy child, quote and unquote, into the marriage. The wife is saying Iginla is married to somebody else. Why didn't you people just freaking divorce? Why are you putting your followers, why are you putting your children, why are you putting your families through this mess? You know why? Because the church was built on wicked traditions. A man cannot divorce his wife until she dies. You know what people do? They engineer the die. Because that's the only way they can be free to remarry. I'm here to set you free from your own foolishness. I'm here to set you free from the cage you built. Nobody built this cage for you. You built it around your hypocritical self. And you have become a victim of it. You've become dumber. You've become poorer. And you've become sadder. As a result of the effort you are making. Somebody came to my page and said something. I'm going to read it out. It's available on my Instagram page. You can go check it out. Tony Rochidi 9 said, go church. You know, go, go. Go Bible study. No. But you go just open your mouth like bed bug, see blood and begin posting anyhow. How was Isaac blessed in the midst of drought and famine? Or guy, if someone is praying to his God for 12 hours, and you who barely say four minutes prayer, you think una blessing go equal? Are you all right, sir? Jeff Bezos is the first human being to count more than $100 billion. He's not a Christian. He doesn't pray for 12 hours. Bill Gates is not a Christian. He speaks of the church Melissa attends with the kids. He doesn't attend with them. Mark Zuckerberg is not a Christian. Aliko Dangote is not a Christian. And let me mess with you. I'll show, I'll show you that I'm a Christian teacher. You said, how come Isaac was blessed? In the land of famine. It has nothing to do with prayer. I'll show you today. Go with me to the book of Genesis. Genesis 12. When I tell you to stop reading that stupid King James translation. Stop reading that ridiculous nonsensity. And start reading more better translated versions. You people will not listen. You're, you're, you're insulting Michael Jackson. Accusing him. Accusing R. Kelly. Whereas it was King James who sold you. Your ancestors are slaves. Was it Michael Jackson that sold you who are slaves? It was the R. Kelly? It was King James. You carry his Bible close to your heart. Why won't you be slaves? Open New Living Translation or New International Version. I don't want to hear that King James here today. Let's, let's, let's fight, not start for all of us. Genesis chapter 26. And I'll show you why Isaac's success had nothing to do with prayer. 
When Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain that he planted for the Lord blessed him. Isaac planted. He didn't sow in a church. Stop being a dingbat. Isaac did not dash a pastor money, did not buy a house for a pastor. He planted his crops. You see, if you read this same thing from King James, you will continue in the line of confusion. Isaac sold in that land and received the same year a hundredfold. So you keep thinking that the soul that he sowed was sowing to church. No, he worked and the Lord blessed the work of his hands. The Lord cannot bless lazy hands that have no work. That's not God blessing you. That's fraud. One idiot is here telling me what happened to Jabrez. Did he pray to change his situation? You are not under the same anointing as Jabrez, Uncle, Uncle Old Testament, that will not hear what I moved to. Let me read, throw Jabez away. Let's read Acts chapter 7. Amarachi, I'm sure, knows this, but you won't read Acts. It is Jabrez you'll be looking about. God does not do Jabrez things for anybody in the New Testament. Acts chapter 7, read 55 with me and grow a brain. Acts chapter 7, chapter 7 verse 55. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God and saw Christ standing at his place of honor at God's right hand. And he said to them, look, I see the heavens open and the son of man standing in a place of honor at God's right hand. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He could see Christ, he could see God. And he was still stoned to death. The walk of a Christian is not so that he can change and live long on earth. It's so that he can fulfill the purpose of God in his life. Forget about Jabez. Start reading about Stephen. Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, was stoned to death. With the Holy Spirit inside of him, full of it as the scriptures say. Start understanding that this world is not your home. Start understanding that God is preparing you for the age to come, for the better place, not this earth. You see, in the old covenant, God blessed people in this earth. In the new covenant, he loved them more. He sent his son to redeem them from the curse of this earth. And the ruler of this earth. Second Corinthians 4 and 4. Satan who is the God of this world has blinded people. God is not in the business in 2018, 2019 to save you on this earth and prolong your life on this earth. He is here to use you for a purpose. And the moment that purpose is done, you cannot jabez yourself. This earth is a prison. You cannot beg God to stay longer in a prison. You love this world because you are a candidate of hell. That's why you want to stay longer in here because the outside world is scary to you. You love your chains. You love your prison. God is not here to keep you in prison. He is here to use you for a purpose and move you to his freedom. No free nation member starts studying the scriptures from the Old Testament. I've warned you people about this nonsense. You people cannot leave David alone. Let me tell you, the contract God had with David, he does not have it with any Nigerian man. You turn yourself to David, you see why there's poverty in black Africa. Our billionaires are poorer and fewer. Only 13 in the whole world. Why is God blessing the Chinese people so much? Can you sit down and ask that question? With all your black prosperity preachers, 
flying their private jets and the biggest church in the world is in Nigeria, taken over from another biggest church in the world that was in Nigeria and handing over to the yet biggest church in the world that is being built in Nigeria, yet Nigeria can only produce four billionaires while China produced 819, India produced 300 and something, uh, America produced 500 and something. Out of the population of the world's billionaires, 2,000 plus, Nigeria contributed a measly three or four. And you are here telling me about Jabez. Shut up! I don't want to hear nonsense and lies. It's what's kept you a slave. Do you know that you're greater than anyone who's ever lived? Because you have the blessings of a sacrifice. But instead you are looking at Isaac. Instead you are looking at Jabez. Instead you are looking at uh, David. Instead you are looking at Solomon. Why don't you go and have 1,000 wives like Solomon? Or why don't you go and sleep with a woman and kill her husband in battle like David? And be as unforgiving as David who, who told, who swore before God. That's, you see, that's why Christ said you don't need to make any vows. Because Christ, uh, uh, David swore before God that he was not going to do anything to Shimei. And then went behind his back and told his son to bring him to a bloody death. Wake up, Negroes. The Old Testament's not for you, it was for the Jews. You want anything? Hang it on Jesus. I beg your pardon. Hang it on Yahushua. The Old Testament... Support the worthless lives. Many of your geos are living up and down. Saying, touch not my anointing. Not anointing. Touch not my anointing. Because they are annoying. Sorry, they are annoying things. It favors them. Let them try to live like Jesus for a week. Let's see if they will not die of high blood pressure. We have become prisons. We have become prisoners in a world that's not ours with doctrines from the pits of hell. Wake up. Look around you and tell them, wake up. Be like Stephen. Be like Paul. Be like John. Be like Matthew. Be like James. Be like John the Baptist that refused to eat anything except honey and locusts so you will not be able to trap him with food let alone money. He was a man in the wilderness, yet Christ said there was no prophet before him, born of man that was greater than him. Instead of you to be like John, you want to be like the one that will be sweet to you, that will make money and, more, and miss poverty. The God of 2018 does not bless people the way he blessed Isaac, where Isaac would be rich and everybody around him would be poor. That's not the blessing of our God for Christians. Acts chapter 4 from 32 says there was no poor believer. No believer was poor. And that's the God of Christianity. Not the God that will raise one. In a pool of poverty. Maybe that's why the black race has only 13 billionaires. Because y'all want to be like Moses and Isaac. And all those people from the Old Testament. Where they had a different contract with God. God does not change. But our status in him has. God bless you all.